Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman and the Program Committee for giving us the chance to uh, speak in this symposium. So my topic is going to be on regenerative medicine of products that has had some attention on um, how the global uh, regulatory affairs is changing. So I would quickly like to uh, review on some of the basic science behind the regenerative medicine products and uh, for low back pain especially. Um, I, we, Gunnar and I, had written a review in 2015 on this topic, and um, we found around 50 animal studies already out there looking for cell therapy for lumbar disc degeneration, and the models were like stab, puncture, or nucleotomy, or ECM degradation agents, which which were various, different various uh, models. And recently, the system, systematic review and meta-analysis have shown, well, 22 animals, nine, nine randomized uh, trials, and it has shown uh, increased discite MRI T2 signals, type 2 collagen messenger RNA, uh, decreased histology, but nevertheless, uh, what does these animal models studies tell us? Uh, I, from my opinion, I think that these studies have tell us that we have enough animal uh, data to support that injection of cells to the intervertebral disc can modulate structure and histology, uh, imaging, uh, biochemical analysis, uh, anti-catabolism and anti-inflammatory responses, but are these outcomes what patients or surgeons need? Well, yes, in the long term, uh, to prevent progressive process of this degeneration, but the patients come to us for immediate pain relief. So we, th we all agree on that these animal model studies have limitations. And these questions need to be investigating in clinical setup. And to clarify these uh, open questions and be specific on what you are trying to ask in clinical settings. So is cell injection to the human disc safe? That is one of the first major concerns that we had. And uh, this uh, clinical study performed by ourselves in 2015 uh, I would like to review a little bit about it. Um, in Japan, uh, regenerative medicine has been a big industry now with IPS technology, as you know, and so forth. So at the time when we were investigating disc uh, injections of cells, it was before the turnover of the Yamanaka story. So we had uh, high uh, levels of hurdles of regulatory uh, uh, ethical uh, approval to inject cells into the disc. So this is, was the only indication that we were uh, able to inject the cells into discs to define if this is a safe procedure, which is the adjacent segment uh, disease. If the patients already have a adjacent segment degeneration in a fusing patient, they were allowed, we were allowed to inject cells into there. And we followed them for three years. It seems like that through imaging, uh, quantitative analysis of uh, MRI images shows that over the three year period, disc degeneration did not progress. And I can go through with you a young patient. Well, these series was a case series of nine patients in their 20s. And this is a kendo athlete, low back pain for three years, failed conservative treatment over six months, and she had a, a huge uh, lumbar disc herniation in her 5-6 disc, was, which was the bottom one. And she had six uh, lumbar discs, so, and her 4-5 was moderately degenerated. 
and five six showed uh, instability. So she went under fusion surgery for five six, and one week later she received autologous NP cell transplantation to L45. So after uh, one, uh, one year, she, her pedicle screws were removed, and she was doing good. And we recently obtained her six and a half year follow-up of uh, dynamic images and um, MRI uh, ADC values, which shows uh, minimal or no, no significant um, decrease in uh, disc degeneration, and also minimal uh, um, dynamic instability. So this is an example of what we see, and uh, none of the patients had any adverse events. Through those times, uh, there has been already five uh, publications of clinical studies by 2015. By 2017, we see nine publications on similar or uh, cell therapy on intervertebral disc disease, mainly in uh, disc degenic pain. And clinical trials in 2015 was uh, six, but now we see 12 clinical trials ongoing this year. One of the uh, recent data people are aware of is the mesoblast study. They are in clinical phase three in US. Um, it's a multi-center randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. Uh, they have projections and they have their own uh, um, calculations in the market. Some of the phase one study data from their uh, study shows 10% reduction compared to the saline, well, which painkillers can outperform. 15% reduction of disability, uh, which is similar, probably similar to physiotherapy can afford. for. So uh, there are still lacking, and their recruitment criteria is quite different in different clinical uh, trials. Here is a new clinical trial from uh, Spain. It's an RCT of 24 patients. You can see that they uh, controlled the uh, indication to one or two level DDD with low back pain and shows significant uh, pain relief and disability uh, outcome measures. Um, recently, uh, some of you are probably um, involved in this study. It's a EU Horizon uh, 2020 project um, of mesenchymal stem cell injection to the um, 112 patients in Europe. Many of uh, European countries are collaborating in this eight center studies. So cell transplantation therapy as of 2017, seems that the clinical trials are growing. Uh, there seems to be no report on adverse effects and efficacy demonstrated in some, including uh, in the RCT. But there are lots of open questions still. Uh, this area is a high placebo effect. So we don't, uh, the control itself is all different among the clinical trials. We need to identify which, is, which are the most effective indications and identify if the cell types are, which of the cell types are most appropriate for whatever reason you are using these products for. These important questions may only be answered from well-designed clinical trials for each question. Uh, in a stepwise manner in concert with the expert discussion with the regulatory agencies. So uh, I would like to uh, close the latter half of my talk with talking into the regulatory framework. So uh, regu regulatory frameworks is very strict because they need to protect the health of their publics. Their principles is a risk assessment based approach uh, they categorize their products by the condition of cell processing and non-homologous use, and not merely by uh, grading of potential risk. 
with the spread of these medical treatments with unproven safety and efficacy can shadow the public health protection. There is no universal guideline for assessing biologic products, including these cell-based therapies for regenerative medicine for human applications. Yes, there are um, a system like the ICH, and there are uh, regulatory systems like the GMP, which controls the quality of the cell cellular products, but this is still not too specific. Like as Jeff has mentioned, in a pro progress that process that US and EU is taking right now, and Japan had been taking this similar pathway until 2014, was that there is a big, big gap between research and post-market. And the uh, product can not make it to the market because of this time lag. In the EU is the similar situation as of right now. And there are this, this much uh, regenerative medicine products in, approved in uh, US and EU and Japan right now, and more recently, uh, cartilage products are increasing. But in Japan, in 2014, we changed the law so that the commercialization can be approved conditionally if safety is proven before uh, going into phase three study which helps faster process of patients and developers. So it used to be like this in the top, but since 2014, we have conditional approval, which uh, the uh, developers can also ask for market and for revenues. The boundaries between the system is that products must not be carcinogenic, and conditional approval will not last longer than seven years. During this period, these measures must be taken to ascertain the proper use of regenerative medicinal products. And upon reapplication, they must demonstrate adequate efficacy and safety. So this is a news that has came around uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it's a uh, histogenics some of you might be aware of. And they are having a, they are ongoing a phase three clinical trial for uh, ACI. And PMDA, the Japanese agency, agreed to permit full market approval with only 30 patients, one year confirmation clinical trial. And the duration from first PMDA visit to agreement of this product was only one year. So by simplifying and streamlining the regulatory process based on products expected safety profile, uh, this can make uh, survive the developers. It can deliver the products faster to the patients where they're needed. And uh, we feel that the other agencies across the globe are looking for the results of our change in the regulatory process. For lastly, uh, as both of the talk speakers have mentioned, uh, if you think about developing a new method, is your idea scientifically and clinically sound? Search and file your IP with realistic views. Think in depth about public contribution, clinical relevance, developmental costs, market, and regulatory trends. So with that, I would like to close my talk. Thank you for your attention.